morning and welcome to this session of GFA's Global Financial Accounting Standards. As we have seen in the last session, it is very essential that there should be certain global financial accounting standards because in today's world, more and more business enterprises, they are having business interests in different parts of the world. So that is what is globalization. Globalization is all about having business all over the world. And if you are having business all over the world, it is essential that you meet certain financial standards whereby you will be able to prepare the financial statements which are acceptable worldwide. That is the reason why we have emphasized that we require certain global financial accounting standards whereby the financial stand statements which will be prepared will be acceptable all over the world. These will be of very high quality and this will, this will give a fair view, true and fair view of the financial affairs of a company. So that is the reason why these accounting standards are necessary. So in the last session we had seen something about IFRS that is International Financial Reporting Standards. Today we will start the session with a brief introduction to US GAAP and then we will move on to the various accounting concepts which we are going to study. Before I start, let me again tell you that those students who don't have much idea about accounting, I have already told you in the last session that you should get hold of some book, simple book, school level book will be sufficient and try to understand the various concepts, basic concepts about accounting. This will help you to understand and better appreciate what is going on in the class. So what are we going to learn in this session? In this session you will learn, understand US that is United States generally accepted accounting principle, principles called US GAAP. Understand the applicability of US GAAP. Understand the issuance history, framework and structure of US GAAP. Understand accounting standard codification, ASC structure and understand the difference between IFRS and US GAAP. What is US GAAP? Let us see. It is generally accepted accounting principles or accounting standards issued in the United States. It is issued by Securities Exchange Commission, SEC, in recommendation with Financial Accounting Standards Board. So these are the two important institutes in the United States which are connected with the US GAAP. First is Securities Exchange Commission, SEC. SEC is the regulator. Just like in India, we have got the regulator, SEBI. SEBI is the regulator of the capital market. So in the US, the Securities Exchange Commission, this is the regulator. In recommendation with the Financial Accounting Standards Board. So there is a standards board in the USA called Financial Accounting Standard Board, FASB. Third point, it enables to prepare more efficient, effective, comparable financial statements for entities registered or listed in the USA. <coughs> Registered means those entities who are doing business in the USA. And listed means those companies which have issued shares to the public and are listed in the stock exchange so that the shares of these companies may be bought and sold in the stock exchange. That is the meaning of listing.
This is the US gap history. CAP Committee on Accounting Procedure 1939-59, APB Accounting Principles Board 59-1973, SASB Financial Accounting Standards Board 1973 onwards, and ASC Accounting Structure Codification, Accounting Standard Codification, it can be called anything. So ASC Accounting Structure Codification since 1st July 2009 onwards. And as I already told you, SEC, this is the regulator of the capital market in the United States. This is the market regulator, SEC, Securities Exchange Commission. So today, whatever US gap is there, ASC, Accounting Structure Codification, is the single source of all the US gap. Everything comes from the accounting structure codification. Issuance body. Issuance body means which are issuing the various accounting standards. US GAAP for private limited companies registered in the USA are issued by SASB. And US GAAP for public limited companies, that is those companies whose shares are purchased by the public, which are, whose shares are issued to the public, these are called public limited companies, are issued by SEC after recommendation from FASB. So this is the two phases, for private companies and for public limited listed companies. So for private companies, FASB will be issuing the various accounting standards, whereas for you, the public limited companies, SEC, that is Securities Exchange Commission, after recommendation from the SASB, will be issuing the various accounting standards. So it is divided into two parts, the private limited company and the public limited company, private companies and public companies. U.S. GAAP is mandatory compliance for both private and public companies operating in the United States and issuing their financials. So it is mandatory for both public as well as private limited companies operating in the United States and issuing their financials. Financial means the financial statements. The regulatory body, as all of you know, we have just discussed, is SEC, Securities Exchange Commission. Multinational companies, corporations in the United States can opt to follow IFRS subject to SEC regulations. There may be certain companies who are having business connections all over the world which are called multinational companies. Such multinational companies, they can follow US GAAP or they can also follow IFRS subject to SEC regulations. But they will be overall, they will be regulated by the SEC. But they can follow the IFRS also. So this is the uh, advantage for the multinational companies. Multinational companies which were following IFRS, they also have got the option to continue following IFRS subject to SEC regulations. Shibangi from South Extension, which chapter is this? This is lesson number one, session number three. Lesson one, session three. This is the framework. We are still discussing the framework. What is the meaning of relevance? What is the meaning of relevance? Can anyone tell me what is the meaning of relevance? R-E-L-E-V-A-N-C-E. -E -E. Relevance. You can see the heading. U.S. GAAP relevance. So what is the meaning of relevance? Relevance means what is pertaining to the matter at hand, what is important. What is important as far as U.S. GAAP is concerned. 
to whom is it applicable that is the meaning of relevance the following figure represents the codification structure of us gap so as i have already told you today the accounting structure codification is the single source of us gap so all rules regulations everything has been codified codified means it has been structured in such a way so as to be easy for the user so the rules and regulations are structured in a codified manner that means arranged codification means arranging the various rules and regulations into a system a certain system is followed we shall see what is that system so that is the meaning of codification you can see the word codification this word codification codification means arranging the various rules and regulations into a system so that it is easy for the user to find out any matter which it wants so you can see the codification 100 100 general principles 200 presentation presentation means how the items are presented in the balance sheet what are the items in the balance sheet assets and liabilities what are the items in the income statement revenue and expenses how these are presented 200 300 asset 400 liabilities 500 equity 600 revenue 700 expenses 800 broad transactions and 900 industry so these are the codes based on these you will be able to find out any item so if you want to know something about assets you have to go to 300 and we shall see in the next slide how the codification is further broken up so this this is the codification 100 200 in this way up to 900 accounting structure codification are non governmental us gap that means these are not related to government organizations asc accounting structure codification is not applicable to government organizations only for non governmental organizations accounting and financial reporting practices outside asc are not gap so any other accounting procedures or practice uh, uh, reporting that is done which is outside asc is not considered to be generally accepted accounting principles so if you if any organization follows any accounting or financial reporting practices which are not as per the asc that is accounting structure codification then it is not considered to be gap that is generally accepted accounting principles so it is not acceptable the second point is if any entity follows any accounting or financial reporting practices which are not as per the asc accounting structure codification then these are not considered to be gap that is generally accepted accounting principles so they are not acceptable third point all new gap and sec amendments are fully integrated into the existing structure of asc that means we have already seen that asc is the main body for issuing various rules and regulations and standards from 2009 onwards so all new us all new gap generally accepted accounting principles and sec amendments securities exchange commission amendments are fully integrated that is merged into the existing structure of asc accounting structure codification earlier issued standard 
such as FAS, FIN, ARB, APB have now been logically merged and structured into AS. So today in the United States there is only one code that is the accounting, accounting structure codification that is the only body which is responsible for all accounting standards and rules and regulations. ASC, Accounting Structure Codification, PST, various, various organizations were there, FAS, Financial Accounting Standard, FIN stands for FASB Interpretations, ARB stands for Accounting Research Bulletin, APP stands for Accounting Principles Board. These were the various accounting uh, various organizations which were there, which were issuing various accounting standards. But from 2009 onwards, all these have been merged, combined into a single accounting structure codification. Hemant from South Extension, ASC as I told you, accounting structure codification. How does codification work? On what basis codification works? ASC uses a topic based model. There are 90 individual topics. The following figure represents how US GAAP codification structure works. You can see topic Subtopic, section, paragraph. You can see here, topic, subtopic, section, paragraph. Topic, three digits. Subtopic, two digits. Section, two digits. Paragraph, two digits. So in this way, the codification is done. As we have already seen, various codes are there. See here, you can see the various codes. 100 means general principles, 200 presentation, 300 asset, 400 liability in this way. Various codes are there. And this coding is further broken up into topic, subtopic, and uh, the uh, section and paragraph. Topic, subtopic, section, and paragraph. So topic is three zero. Uh, topic is three digit. Subtopic two digit. Two digit. Section two digit. Paragraph two digit. For example, topic. Let us say asset. We have seen asset is represented by three zero zero. So asset will be three zero zero. Subtopic. Say for example inventory. In the asset, one item will be there called inventory. That inventory code is. 30. Section. In the section, it is two digits. So within that inventory, you will ha you will be having various, say, recognition is 25, measurement is 30. In this way, various codes will be there. So in this way, you will be able to identify exactly what you want to know. Suppose you want to know something about inventory under assets. You want to know something about inventory, how it is measured. How is inventory measured? So what will you do? First go to topic 300, which is asset. Second go to inventory, which is 30. 30 stands for inventory. Then third you go to measurement, that is 30 stands for measurement. That is the section. So in this way, the accounting codification works. Code. It is given by coding. By means of coding, one topic is identified. Once the topic is identified, the subtopic is identified. Once the subtopic is identified, the section is identified. In this way, the codification structure works. So, at present, we are having this accounting structure codification, which is divided into three parts, four parts, in fact. Topic, three digits, subtopic, two digits, section, two digits, 
paragraph two digit. So if you want to know something about assets and you want to know something about inventory or you want to know how it is measured, in this way you have to go about. So this is how the accounting structure codification works. So there is a uh, various list is there. I don't think so. I will be able to show you this list. Uh, so we'll go to the next uh, session. So what is the difference between IFRS and US GAAP? What is the difference? First, you can see IFRS is often referred to as being principle based. So it is based on certain principle, certain guidelines, and certain rules. Whereas US GAAP is said to be more rule based. There is a rule and you have to follow the rule. There is no discretion. Whereas IFRS is more principle based. It is based on certain guidelines and principles and rules. Second point. Application of IFRS requires judgment and discretion. It lacks details. So IFRS is not as detailed as US GAAP and it requires judgment that means certain matter may be there you have to use your own idea about what it can be or what it should be so it requires judgment and discretion discretion is the option option to choose you can decide as per your thinking so this is more requires more judgment and thinking whereas US GAAP is more detailed and provides specific guidance and enforcement. US GAAP is first we have seen US GAAP is more rule based. Second, US GAAP is more detailed and provides specific guidance and enforcement. What is to be done in what situation US GAAP gives you more details and more guidance is there unlike IFRS. And last point is IFRS does not carry industry specific segments. IFRS does not deal with industry specific segments. Say for example IT industry or some manufacturing uh, industry or whatever it is does not carry specific industry wide. Whereas US GAAP covers industry verticals that means specific industry segments. US GAAP deals with specific industry segments unlike IFRS which does not deal. So this difference that you can see between IFRS and US GAAP, this will be dealt with at the end of each chapter. At the end of each topic we shall be discussing regarding the difference between IFRS and US GAAP. As already I told you, the US GAAP is more rule based, it is more detailed and provides specific guidance than IFRS. Okay, quiz. Which one of the following option is the issuing issuance body for US GAAP? So, who issues US GAAP? A, B, C, D. Please tell me what is the correct answer. Please raise your hand and tell me. A, B, C, D. Which of the following options is the issuing body for US GAAP? Which of the following options is the issuing body for US GAAP? Who issues US GAAP? A, B, C, D. Which is the correct answer? Please raise your hand and tell me. Which is the correct answer? Everybody should respond. I am seeing only two or three people are responding, which is not proper. Everybody should raise your hand and ask, answer the question. Which of the following options is the issuing body for US GAAP? Okay, Mayank from Connaught Place, Devale from G Tank, Faisal from Body Valley, Surjit from Old DLF, Subham from DCP. Divya from Kamak Street, Jyoti from South Extension, Shakshi from DCP, Amit from South Extension, 
Gulshan from South Extension, Manisha from South Extension, Nikita from DCP, and Preeti from South Extension. All of you have given the correct answer. Correct answer is FASB, regulatory body is SEC. C is the correct answer. C is the correct answer. C is the correct answer. FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board, regulatory body is SEC, Securities Exchange Commission. Second question, which one of the following option is generally the single source of US GAAP? Which is the single source of US GAAP? A, B, C, D. Which is the correct answer? Please see. Single source of US GAAP. Which is the correct answer? Everybody should be able to answer this question. Just now we have discussed. Which one of the following options is currently the single source of US GAAP? That means all accounting standards are issued and com compiled by this organization. Which is this? Okay, Amit from South Extension, Santhia from South Extension, Madhuri from Sector 12, Fatima from DCP, Faisal from Bodhi Valley, Guest 10 from Durgapur, Guest 1 from Ghatkopar, Hemant from South Extension, Nikita from DCP, Mayang from DCP, Ridima from DCP, Gini from Sarita Bihar, Sourav from DCP, Jyoti from South Extension, Rashmi from DCP, Maya from DCP, Manish from DCP, Gaurav from South Extension, Ritu Parana from New Pan Bazar. Shivangi from South Extension, Bhavna from South Extension, Vishal from DCP, all of you have given the correct answer, very good. B is the correct answer, Accounting Standard Codification, Accounting Standard Codification, ASC, Accounting Standard Codification. Next question, as per both IFRS and US GAAP, customer loans and advances are categorized and dealt as, since we have not done, done this, I will give you the answer. Answer is B, financial instruments. As per IFRS and US GAAP, customer loans and advances are categorized and dealt as B is the correct answer. Financial instruments, B is the correct answer. So, customer loans and advances are categorized as, answer is D. I have not given this, I am not asking you this because this is new to you and most of you may not be knowing. Although Jyoti, Rituparna and guest 10 from Dugapur, all of you have given the correct answer. So, loans and advances are called financial instruments, fall under the financial instruments. Loans and advances fall under the financial instruments. So, what have we learnt in this session? In this session, you have learnt US GAAP is generally accepted accounting principles or accounting standard issued in the United States. It is issued by SEC in recommendation with FASB. It is mandatory. Mandatory means compulsory by law. Mandatory means compulsory by law. Compliance for both private and public limited public companies operating in the United States and issuing their financials. Accounting and financial reporting practices outside ASC are not GAAP, so they are not accepted. And last point is IFRS is principle based, whereas US GAAP is rule based. IFRS is principle based, whereas US GAAP is rule based.
so we we'll go on to the next session that is accounting concepts accounting concepts accounting conventions accounting principles so what is the meaning of concept concept you can see the word concept concept means ideas various ideas through which the accounting has been done convention 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 means the way something is done suppose accounting is done in a particular way then that is called convention accepted usage how something is done and this is accepted not that everybody is doing something in different manners but what is accepted the what is the accepted way of doing something that is called convention and principles principles are rules and guidelines various rules and guidelines which have been followed all along all these years these are called the principles so in this session you will learn identify define and apply the accounting concepts conventions and principles applying the underlying rules for journalization and create journal entries for different scenarios the word journal you can see the word journal journal is an accounting book whenever any business transaction takes place it has to be recorded in the book this book is called the journal and the process of recording in the book is called journalization the process of recording in the book is called journalization so we'll discuss this as we go along the various sections and third point is understand fundamentals and terms used in finance and accounting so there are certain terms which we must understand which are constantly used in finance as well as accounting so we shall be learning some new words and new terms so as you can see we are going to learn various new words various new terms so you have to get acquainted with all these terms so please read the ebook on a regular basis and you will be able to understand what these terms are you will be able to understand the meaning and what these terms or what these uh, what do you call these various words what do they mean so we must understand the meaning of the words as well as the terms Guest ten from Durgapur says, "Please issue digital books for learning. The matter has to be taken up with your center only. The matter regarding issue of e-book has to be taken up with your center. So please take up the matter with your center. And one more important thing is that the students should be able to log in for this program only with your student ID, not as a guest." please remember this important thing students should be able to log in with your student id and not as a guest accounting concepts are basic assumptions rules principles that are the basis of recording of business transactions and preparing the accounts So what are accounting concepts accounting concepts are basic assumption assumption means the truth anything related to truth is called assumption assumption rules principles so these are the basic things based on which various account the various recording is done as well as various preparation of various financial statements take place so this is the definition of accounting concept basic assumption 
rules, principles that are the basis of recording of business transactions and preparing of accounts. So what is done is, whenever a business transaction takes place, it may be a purchase, it may be a sale, it may be some expenditure, it may be some income, all these have to be recorded. It is recorded in the book, from the book it is transferred to another control ledger which is called the general ledger or the general book. The meaning of ledger is book. So from the general ledger we will be making our financial statement that is profit and loss account, balance sheet, etc. Second point, accounting convention. Convention as I told you means the way something is done. So what are accounting convention? Are practices and assumptions that have evolved, that means developed over a period of time with customs or usage. So that is the meaning of convention, accepted usage, accepted way of doing something. So what are accounting conventions? Are practices and assumption. Assumption as I told you means truth that have evolved, that is developed over a period of time with customs. Customs means the traditional way of doing something. We say this is our custom, isn't it? We use the term custom quite often. This is our custom. That means this is the traditional way of doing something. This has been followed over the large number of years and it is we are still following this. So that is what we call the convention, custom or usage. So accounting conventions are practices and assumptions that have evolved over a period of time with customs and usage. Next point, the objective of accounting concept and convention is to maintain number one, uniformity, number two, consistency, number three, high quality. Uniformity. Uniformity means, already we have discussed in the last session, uniformity means all entities must follow certain accounting standards uniformly. Different account, different, uh, say for example in India, all business organizations must follow one accounting standard. If different organizations follow different accounting standards, then lot of confusion will be there. In order to avoid that, certain uniform accounting standards and practices have to be followed in a country. So that is called uniformity. Next is consistency. Consistency means whatever accounting principle you have chosen, based on that accounting principle, you have to do your accounting from one accounting period to the next. That means, in this financial year, I have chosen one accounting principle. In next financial year, I change that accounting principle. In the third financial year, I again change the accounting principle. So what am I doing? I am not consistent. That means I am not remaining the same. I am changing constantly. That is not allowed. So if you are following certain accounting principle, that accounting principle must be followed from one accounting period to the next. If you don't follow, then comparability will be difficult. You will not be able to compare two years. What is the performance between two years? This comparison will not be possible. I'll give an example. The valuation of inventory Every organization at the end of the financial year, they have to value the inventory. Now this valuation of inventory, there are four, three or four methods or five methods. Different methods are there. So if an organization has chosen one method, then that method has to be followed consistently. I cannot use one method this year, second method another year, third method is another year, if that happens, then there is no consistency, everything is changing. Consistency means 
it is remaining same throughout so this is one important concept and last is high quality high quality means if an organization follows the accounting standards then the financial statements will be of high quality so that is the reason why accounting standards must be followed by organization the various accounting concepts what are the various accounting concepts business entity money measurement going concern accounting period historical cost duality aspect then realization concept accrual concept matching concept revenue recognition verifiable objective and materiality concept so various concepts are there let us study each concept one by one first is business entity concept one of the important concepts of accounting business entity concept says a business is treated as separate and distinct from its members a separate set of book is prepared and owner equity is treated as a liability from a business perspective that is view point and for other businesses of proprietor different books are prepared so these are the four important points regarding business entity so suppose there is a business firm suppose let us say i have started a business if i start a business then the business will be having some identity it will have some name and it will be do, i will be doing business in that name of that firm so accounting concept and accounting principle says that a business entity has to be treated as separate and distinct from its members members may be the owners so a business entity is separate and if i as a proprietor if i have invested some money in the business then my money which is invested in the business as far as the business is concerned that is taken as a liability so that is treated as a liability so in the balance sheet my investment in the business that is treated as a liability as far as the business is concerned so the business entity is separate and distinct this is the first important concept of accounting a business is treated as separate and distinct from its members members means the owners and separate set of books are there and owners equity is treated as a liability and for other businesses separate books have to be second concept monetary measurement concept monetary measurement concept transactions of monetary nature are recorded only transactions which relate to money matter those are only recorded so this is one another important concept uh, concept what is that monetary measurement concept transactions of monetary nature are recorded only transactions related to money is recorded transactions of qualitative nature even though of great importance to a business are not considered qualitative nature it may be the quality of management the quality of the products which are produced the quality of the material all these are qualitative aspects so these qualitative aspects are not taken into consideration so this is called the monetary measurement concept next we are coming to going concern concept going concern that 
concern means an entity going concern continuing the operations so what is this going concern concept a business will continue in the foreseeable future and there is no intention to close down the business foreseeable foreseeable means anything what we can see in the future foreseeable in the near future that is the meaning of foreseeable future and there is no intention to close down the business so the business which is there is a running business con which will continue in the future that's why it is called going concern concept so it will keep on going the business will continue it will keep on going that's why it is called going concern concept so a business will continue in the foreseeable future in the near future and there is no intention to close down the business second point fixed assets are recorded at their original cost and depreciation is charged on these assets third all of you know that all fixed assets will be recorded at original cost and depreciation will be charged what is depreciation depreciation is the falling value of an asset because of regular wear and tear every year certain amount is written off and this amount is called the depreciation and third point because of this concept outside pet parties enter into long term contracts with the enterprise anyone who is wanting to deal with the business organization he enters into a long term contract why because it will not close down in future it is a going concern that means it will go on doing its business there is no intention to close down the business so this is what we call the going concern concept a business will continue in the foreseeable future and there is no intention to close down the business next accounting period concept the entire life of the firm is divided into intervals time intervals for ascertaining the profit and loss so the entire lifetime of the business concern is divided into time intervals to ascertain the profit and loss it is of the following two types financial year and calendar year calendar year all of you know 1st january to 31st december and financial year this depends on the country in our country financial year is 1st of april to 31st of march so 31st of march is the year ending financial year ending for the organizations and for everybody so this is the ac accounting period concept so the entire life of the firm is divided into time intervals two parts are there one is the financial year and the other is the calendar year so this financial year which is there as i told you this varies from country to country for some countries it may be 1st april to 31st march for some countries it may be 1st october to 30th of september it depends the following figure represents the accounting equation assets is equal to liabilities plus owners equity asset is equal to liabilities plus owners equity what are assets resources used in the business what are liabilities resources supplied by creditors banks and owners so liabilities and equity these are the resources obtained either from the owner or from the banks or from the creditors and these are the source of fund from this source from this source the company will be getting its fund that's why it is called source of fund and the assets these are the resources which are purchased from out of this source so these assets are called use of funds use so source of fund use of fund 
from where is the money coming and how the money has been used. So source of fund and use of fund. So asset is equal to liability plus owner's equity. We shall see why this is after we see a few more concepts. We will understand why asset is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity, how it becomes. That we shall see subsequently when we learn some more accounting concepts. Ritu Parna from Panbazar, did you skip some slides? Uh, I don't think so. Let me see. Okay, yes, correct, correct. Very good. Ritu Parna, thank you so much. Correct. Okay, very good. Ritu Parna, thank you. I have uh, skipped two, two or three slides in between. I have skipped. Okay. So this is what we have done, accounting period concept. Next, for taxation purpose, the financier is adopted as prescribed by the government. For taxation purpose, financial year is adopted as prescribed by the government. Companies that have their shares listed on the stock exchange publish their quarterly results. So this is regarding the financial accounting year concept. Next we are going to the historical cost concept. Next we are going to historical cost concept. Assets are recorded at their original price. It serves the basis for further accounting treatment of the asset. Acquisition cost relates to the past that is it is known as historical cost. So if I have got one asset, I have purchased that asset maybe one month back, maybe two months back, maybe two years back, maybe ten years back. So that's why the cost of acquisition, cost of acquisition means the what I have purchased, the amount by which I have purchased that asset, that is called the cost of acquisition. This relates to an earlier period. That's why the cost is known as historical cost. It relates to a past period. So this is the historical cost concept. Assets are recorded at their original price. It serves the basis for further accounting treatment of the asset. And acquisition cost relates to the past. Hence it is called historical cost. Duality concept. Duality concept. Duality means two-sided. Duality means true. Every transaction recorded in accounting has a dual impact. One on the debit side and the other on the credit side. That means every transaction which is accounted for in the books of accounts, it has got two aspects. What are these two aspects? One will be recorded in the debit side, other will be recorded in the credit side. Now, this debit and credit side, we shall be studying about this in the future uh, sections which are, will be coming, sessions which will be coming. What is debit? What is credit? Which item can be considered as debit? Which item will be considered as credit? And which is the debit side? Which is the credit side? we shall see in the future sessions. But for the timing, you just understand this much, that every business transaction has got two aspects. One will be recorded in the debit side, the other will be recorded in the credit side. This is called the duality aspect. For every debit, there is a credit, and for every credit, there is a debit. This is a very, very important accounting concept. For every debit entry, there is a credit, and for every credit entry, there is a debit. So this is what we call the duality aspect. This is what we call the duality aspect. The duality aspect is commonly expressed in terms of accounting equation. What is that accounting equation? Asset is equal to owner's equity plus outside liabilities. Assets are in 
debit balance liabilities and equity are in credit balance so debit side is equal to the credit side why it has happened because of the duality aspect duality concept because of the duality concept for every transaction there is a credit entry as well as a debit entry so this is called the duality this is what we call the duality aspect so asset is equal to owner's equity plus liability all assets are in debit balance and all liability and equity are in credit balance so debit side is equal to the credit side so whenever the balance sheet is taken out whenever the balance sheet is prepared it will have two columns one is the asset column the other is the liability column what is asset asset is something which i own what is liability liability is something which i owe so liability side will be there asset side will be there and both the assets and liability if you total the amount should be equal and the balance sheet is said to be tallied Ritu Parna from New Pan Bazar. Can you show the previous slide once? Okay. So this is the historical concept, as I told you. The original amount, cost of acquisition. That means the cost at which the item was purchased. That is called the historical cost concept. That is called the historical cost concept. okay so this is uh, the this one we have already done that means the asset side is equal to the liabilities plus the owner's equity liabilities plus owner's equity this is known as the source of fund source of the funds and assets are the use of the funds from where have the funds come funds have been funds have come either from the owner or from the banks or from the creditors who are the creditor creditor means someone who has given a loan he is called the creditor and the person who has taken the loan is called the debtor so this liabilities plus owner's equity this is the source of funds and these assets are how the funds have been used so assets are called the use of funds assets are the resources used in the business okay the following figure represents the accounting equation between assets liability and equity equity <coughs> as you can see asset is equal to liabilities plus equity now the equity that is there equity means the owner's funds the money which has been given by the owners that is called the equity so you can see here owner's capital minus owner's withdrawal if the owner has withdrawn any money during the accounting year then that is debited reduced plus gain any gain which is there profit which is there is added and any expense which is there that is reduced so ultimately what happens this equity section which is there this is the owner's capital to the owner's capital if any money is withdrawn that is reduced if there is a profit that is added if there is a loss it is subtracted so at the end of the accounting period this is what happens to the equity any withdrawing with any amount that is withdrawn by the owners that is reduced from the equity amount if there is a profit it is added to the equity if there is a loss it is reduced from the equity so ultimately at the end of the accounting year 
this is what transaction takes place. Next, few more concepts. Realization concept. What is realization concept? This concept states that a revenue from any business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is realized. The term realization means the creation of a legal right to receive money. That means the business entity has got a legal right to receive the money. See the example. Selling goods is realization. Receiving order is not. If I have received the order, it is not considered as realization. But if the goods are sold, that means it is realization. So if the goods are sold, you can account for the revenue. You can recognize the revenue in the books. So this is what we call the realization concept and revenue can be recognized in the books provided the goods are sold. So this is called the realization concept. The revenue is realized. So what does the realization concept say? This concept states that revenue from any business transaction should be included in the accounting records only when it is realized. So when can revenue be recognized? Only when it is realized. So if revenue is realized, then the revenue can be accounted for in the books of accounts. Say for example, a sale has been made, goods have been sold, but the buyer will pay the money after 60 days. Now, in such a case, since goods have been sold, that means the revenue is realized. This is the realization concept. Since the revenue is realized, you can account for the revenue. So, the term realization means the creation of a legal right to receive the money. What is it? The legal right to receive money. That is called realization. Next we are coming to a very important concept. Accrual concept. Accrual. Accrual concept means revenue and expenditure of a business. This should be accounted for using accrual concept. That means if any revenue has fallen due, is realized or it is earned, then it should be accounted for. Similarly, any expenditure also has to be accounted if it has fallen due. If expenditure has fallen due, it has to be accounted. If income has fallen due, it has to be accounted, whether cash is received or not. Whether cash is received or not, revenue and related expenses must be accounted for. This is the actual concept. Say for example, the year ending, financial year ending is 31st of March. Now we are receiving the electric bill for the month of March, only sometime in the month of April, say middle of April, we will receive the electric bill for the month of March. But 31st March is the closing. So whatever expenditure has been incurred as far as the electric bill is concerned, that has to be accounted for. So we will debit our expenditure, rough estimate, estimated electricity amount, electricity bill, and we will credit our outstanding liabilities we credit our liability account. So this is the actual concept which says that if an expenditure has fallen due, it has to be accounted. 
if a revenue has fallen due it also has to be accounted whether cash is received or not whether cash is paid or not even if you don't pay cash expenditure has to be debited keep it separately when the bill comes pay the bill similarly suppose let us say an organization has taken a loan the interest on the loan is payable every quarter interest on the loan is payable every quarter but at the end of each month the interest expenses have to be accounted for so at the end of each month interest expenses will be accounted for and it will be kept separately in outstanding liabilities or interest payable account and at the end of the quarter the interest payable account will be debited and amount will be paid so this is what we call the accrual concept so transactions are identified and recorded as and when they take place is respective of the cash settlement this is the important word what is the important word irrespective of the cash settlement irrespective of the cash settlement this is the important sentence whether cash comes or not you have to account for the revenue and expenses as and when it has fallen due second point a revenue is recorded when sales are made or services are rendered if you have made the sale if you have given the service you can recognize the revenue you can account for the revenue in your books that is the meaning of recognize the revenue whether cash is received or not similarly second point third point expenses are recorded in the accounting period in which they assist in earning the revenue whether cash is paid or not so whether cash is paid or not that is immaterial but if a expenditure if a any expense is fallen due that has to be accounted for so this is what we call the accrual concept this is what we call the accrual concept so please see the white board please see the white board so you can see revenue is recorded when the sale is made so what do you do debit an account which is called account receivable credit sale this is the revenue similarly expenses are recorded when payable say suppose there is a sale you have you have recognized the revenue at the same time the related expenses that is sales commission this has to be recorded so debit sales commission and credit instead of cash you credit the payable expenses payable credit the expenses payable outstanding expenses are to be accounted for for example electric bill i gave you an example electric bill similarly prepaid expenses prepaid expenses are those expenses which have not fallen due are not to be shown in the profit and loss account similarly revenue received in advance is not shown in profit and loss account so these are this is the accrual concept accrual concept says that expenditure or revenue has to be recognized as and when they fall due if a revenue has not fallen due you cannot take into income if an expenditure has not fallen due you cannot show in your expense account that is the reason why prepaid expenses are not shown in profit and loss account prepaid expenses are expenses which are paid in advance these cannot be shown in profit and loss account similarly any revenue which is received in advance is not shown in profit and loss account until the sale is made or the service is provided and outstanding expenses are to be accounted for this is the accrual concept for example electric bill and expenses are recorded when payable debit sales commission for example 
and offset you have to keep it in uh, expenses payable account this one you have to keep in expense payable it is not cash it is expense payable is expense payable account so this is the important thing you must understand so this is what we call the accrual concept so we we'll come go back to the slides now we we'll go back to the slides so this is a very important concept all of you must understand this accrual concept what does the accrual concept say actual concept says that revenue and expenditure if it has fallen due then it has to be recorded if revenue is realized it has to be accounted for whether cash is received or not similarly if an expense has fallen due then it has to be recorded whether payment is made or not so this is what we call the actual concept so at this stage we'll take a short break of 2 minutes and we'll come back
ओके वेलकम Okay, actual concept. So we'll go to go to the next slide. That is okay. Matching concept. Next concept is matching concept. Uh, I will advise. I will advise all students to go through the e-book and understand these various concepts because this is the foundation. Unless you know the concepts, going ahead will be very difficult. so please read the concept understand the concepts if you don't understand something you can discuss in the classroom session as well as you can discuss in the cloud group either of the two and all students should join the cloud group please remember that is very important so matching concepts all revenue of a particular period will be matched with the cost of that period for determining the net profit of that period so all revenue of a particular period will be matched with the cost of that period that means the expenses for determining the net profit of that period accordingly for matching costs with revenue cost means expenses number 1 first revenue should be recognized then cost incurred for generating that revenue should be recognized so this is what we call the matching concept in simple language whenever there is an income whenever there is revenue then the related expenditure has to be accounted for at the same time i gave you that example of sales if there is a sales then you will debit account receivable and you will credit sales you are recognizing the revenue so at the same time the related expenses say for example the sales commission that has to be recognized so debit sales commission credit expenses payable you keep it separately but you have to account for at the same time so whenever rev revenue is recognized the related expenditure also has to be recognized whenever revenue is recognized the related expenditure also has to be recognized so this is what we call the matching concept the revenue must be matched with the expenditure related expenditure this is the matching concept second is revenue recognition concept revenue recognition concept when can you recognize the revenue that means when can the revenue be accounted for the revenue recognition concept is part of the accrual concept so it is part of the accrual concept and it says that a revenue has to be recognized only when it is earned when can revenue be recognized when it is earned when is the revenue earned only when the sale is made so that was there in the accrual concept so this is actually an extension of the accrual concept this revenue recognition concept thus thus the revenue generated criteria have to be substantially fulfilled to account for revenue by any entity ias 18 international accounting standards number 18 on revenue further elaborates and has been built further on this concept so revenue recognition concept is part of the accrual concept this says that revenue has to be recognized only when it is earned when will you recognize the revenue only when it is earned and when is the revenue earned only when the sale is made only then you can recognize the revenue so this is what we call the revenue recognition concept devale from jit and cloud group id revgenit s 160883 revgenit 160883 
S160883. That is the next is verifiable objective concept. Verifiable objective concept. All business transactions recorded in the accounting should have an evidence that can be verified with their source document. For example, voucher, invoice, bank statement, etc. That means when you are recording any business transaction in the books of accounts, there must be some evidence on the basis of which you are doing the transaction. It may be a cash memo, it may be some expenditure voucher, it may be certain uh, invoices, it may be a bank statement. So there must be something verifiable. That means the auditor should be able to verify on what basis the transaction has been made in your books of accounts. So that is what we call verifiable objective concept. So what does the verifiable objective concept say? All business transactions recorded in accounting should have an evidence and can be verified with their source documents. Voucher, invoice, bank statement, these are all the documents. Next is materiality concept. What is the materiality concept? According to the American Accounting Association, an item is regarded as material if there is reason to believe that knowledge of it would influence the decision of an informed investor. That means any item is considered to be material if it will influence the decision of an investor. That means an entity cannot leave out any material information from its balance sheet. It has to disclose that item. It cannot hide. It cannot say, no, it is not necessary. It cannot say like that. So full disclosure has to be made. But if an item is too small and it will not affect the user in such a case, such item can be, cannot be, dis need not be disclosed. So this is what we call the materiality concept. This is an exception to the convention of full disclosure. What does full disclosure say? Full disclosure says that when an entity, business entity is bringing out its financial statements, full disclosure has to be made regarding all items, all events regarding the fina uh, finances of the company. So nothing can be hidden. But this materiality concept says that if an item is very insignificant, that means it is too small. Insignificant means it is too small, it will not have any effect on the user. Such an item need not be disclosed. That means you need not state such an item in your financial statement. So this is called the materiality concept. So again I am uh, reading. According to American Accounting Association, an item should be regarded as material if there is reason to believe that knowledge of it would influence the decision of an informed user. So this is an exception to the convention of full disclosure and items having insignificant effect to the user need not be disclosed. There are various items which are to be disclosed in the financial statements, that is the balance sheet. And if these items are too small too insignificant, that means it is too small, it will not affect the user, such items need not be disclosed. Just speak from Rajul Garden, I didn't get what is revenue concept. Revenue concept, as already I told you, revenue concept means revenue can be accounted for if it is earned. If you have earned it, <coughs> excuse me. If you have not worked for the full month, 
will you get your salary? <coughs> if you have not worked for the full month, will you get your salary? You will not get. Why? Because you have not earned. So, here also it is the same thing. Revenue can be recognized, that means accounted for, only when it is earned. And when will revenue be earned? Only when the sale is made. If the sale is made, you can recognize the revenue. Because revenue has been earned. Cash basis of accounting. Cash basis of accounting is very simple. When cash is received, revenue is accounted for. When cash is paid, expenditure is accounted for. So simple. So what is cash basis of accounting? Transactions are identified and recorded on the basis of cash settlement. Income is recognized when cash is received. Expenditure is recognized when cash is paid. So when cash is received, you can recognize the income, that is you can account for the income and when the ex, uh, cash is paid, you can recognize the expenditure. But cash basis of accounting is not accepted. Accounting standards say you have to follow the actual basis of accounting. So cash basis of accounting is not acceptable. Now, certain accounting conventions, very important accounting conventions, three very, very important accounting conventions, consistency, conservatism, full disclosure. These are three very important accounting conventions. Convention, as I told you, means the accepted way of doing the accounting, accepted usage. So let us see one by one. What are these? Consistency. Concepts and principles, once selected and adopted, should be consistently applied from one accounting period to the next. It is essential to enable any financial analyst to analyze the financial statements to make a meaningful comparison of profitability, growth, financial position of the organization. Next, for projecting a positive image of the financial position of the concern and make historical comparison. Consistency, as already I told you, consistency means unchanging. You cannot change. If an accounting principle or accounting method has been followed by an entity, the same accounting method or accounting policy has to be consistently followed from one accounting period to the next. That means an entity cannot go on changing the accounting method. This year it is adopting one method, next year it will adopt another method, next year it will adopt some other method. That is not allowed. Why? Because if there is no consistency, if there is no consistency, then comparison becomes difficult. You will not be able to understand how the organization has performed, how, what is the profitability position, what is the growth position, what is the financial position of the organization, you will not be able to understand you will not be because you will not be able to make historical comparison hence what is essential is that once an accounting policy has been chosen by an entity the same accounting policy has to be consistently followed from one accounting period to the next why because comparison will be possible if comparison is possible you will be able to find out how profitable is the company what is the growth of the company and what is the financial position of the company. So that's the reason why consistency is very important. So concepts and principles, once selected and adopted, 
should be consistently applied. Consistently means unchanging from one accounting period to the next. Why? Because the analysts, financial analysts, will be able to find out a meaning, make a meaningful comparison of the profitability, growth, and financial position. What was the position last year? And what is the position this year? You can make a comparison, provided the accounting the accounting is consistent. Consistency in accounting. Uh, from Dhanbad, someone is asking, what is accounting? From Dhanbad, someone is asking what is accounting, but please sign with your name. I am not able to understand uh, who has signed, what is his name. I would request you to sign with your name. Sign in with your name. What is accounting? Very good question. Accounting. Accounting means maintaining the records of business transactions in the books. If I am doing business, I have to keep some records. How much purchase I have made, how much sale I have made, so that at the end of the year, I will be able to find out how much profit I have made, what is my growth. All these important things will be able to find out. That is the reason why accounting is necessary. So accounting is the procedure for recording business transactions as and when they occur in the books of accounts and from the books of accounts we transfer the various items of assets, liabilities into the general ledger which is the main control ledger, the control book. From the general ledger we prepare the statement of financial position or in short we call it the balance sheet. Next is conservatism. You must have heard about the word conservative. Conservative is, that means, he is uh, the traditional way of doing something, very conservative. He always follows the rules. So, conservative means neither overestim neither overstating nor understating. What is the market value? That item you have to say as per that market value. So, items of expenses, income expenses and assets and liabilities which are there in the balance sheet, they should neither be overstated nor understated. If the value is 10,000, it should be mentioned as 10,000 only. You cannot say 12,000 or 8,000 or something like that. So an item of income, expenses, assets and liabilities has to be stated at the actual value. It cannot be overstated nor can it be understated. This is the concept of conservatism. So, in this convention, income and expenditure as well as the value of assets and liabilities are neither overstated nor understated. Overstate means increase the value. Understate means decrease the value. It envisages that means takes into account that all anticipated and probable losses are provided. If there is a probability that the entity may suffer some loss and account of some business transaction, then that loss also has to be provided. That means you should debit your expenditure and keep the amount separately as a provision in your books. It presents a reasonable and fair picture of the profit and loss of the business entity. So this is the conservatism. So main important word in conservatism is neither overstated nor understated. You should neither overstate nor understate. That is the conservatism. That means the balance sheet will provide a true and fair view of the financial affairs of the company.
Samaram Dhanbad again is asking full form of CFMA. Sorry, I don't know the full form of CFMA. Okay. Full disclosure. What is full disclosure? Refers to the disclosure of important facts that might affect the decision of an informed user of the financial statements. We have already learnt about this full disclosure. It is very essential that all business enterprises disclose everything. Everything related to the business must be disclosed so that the user of the state the financial statement will be able to take an informed decision. So full disclosure is very essential. So what is full disclosure? Refers to the uh, refers to the disclosure of important facts that might affect the decision of an informed user of the financial statements. Is related to and derived from a number of objectives of financial accounting. These are the various objectives: relevance. Relevance means pertaining to the matter at hand, importance, any item which is of importance and pertains to the matter at hand must be disclosed. Next, neutrality. Neutrality means unbiased, fair. Next, completeness. That means the financial statement, that is the balance sheet, must provide a complete picture of the business activities of the organization. Next, understandability. That means the user, after going through the financial statement, should be able to understand the various items which are there. So these are some important things related to full disclosure. The enterprise must disclose all important facts. That is the important thing. He is influenced by social responsibility of business figures. So today, it has become the social responsibility of the business leaders. Why? Because the common man is in investing in the company. He is making investments in the company. He is buying the shares of the company and he is becoming a shareholder. So because he is a shareholder, the shareholders, as an owner, he has a right to know every aspect of the business of the organization. That's why full disclosure is very essential. So it has become the social responsibility. So the business leaders, that means the various owners of various companies, they want to present the fair, true picture about the affairs of the company. Hence, full disclosure is very essential. Okay, uh, there is a test yourself. I will give the test yourself question in the cloud group. I will give the test yourself question in the cloud group. Please try to do the test yourself question in the cloud group, whatever I am giving. Try to do that yourself and I will give the solution after a few days. Now, some more important terms and and concepts. Accrual. Accrual already we have discussed. List of expenses that have been incurred and expensed but not paid or a list of sales that has been completed but not yet paid. <coughs> so, accrual. Any revenue or any expenditure that has fallen due has to be accounted for. That is the accrual concept. Next is amortization. Amortization means the value of an asset has to be written off during its useful life. In the case of tangible asset, we call this depreciation. In the case of intangible asset, we call it amortization. So what is amortization? Gradual reduction of amounts 
in an account over time either for assets or liabilities next asset property with cash value that is owned by a business or individual anything that i own is called an asset audit tree that means if there are certain transactions which take place in the books of accounts then i should be able to track the flow of events this is called the audit trail trail means the track from where it is come where it is gone from there where it is gone that is the track the record of every transaction when it was done by whom where used by the auditors when validating the financial statements validating means making it valid so this audit trail is very important record of every transaction who has done it when it was done where it was done so all this is called the audit trail next auditors auditors are third party accountants who review an entity's financial statements for accuracy and provide a statement to that effect so auditors will be doing the audit audit of the company and based on the auditor of the company they will give their report or opinion about the uh, various accounting policies which are followed about the uh, acceptability of the financial statements which the company has come up with next bookkeeping bookkeeping as all of you know recording of financial in information when all business transactions whenever business transactions are accounted for these are accounted for in the books books of accounts this procedure is called bookkeeping that means you are writing the books as per the transactions budgeting budgeting all of you know our uh, uh, government has come up with a budget on the 1st of february so budgeting budgeting is the process assigned assigning forecasted income forecasted means you are predicting the income of the future income and expenses two accounts which amounts will be compared with the actual income and expenses for analysis of variances differences so every company must make some budgeting they must have some budgeting what could be the future expenses what could be the future revenue what could be the future sales all this is very important next capital stock found in the equity portion of the balance sheet prescribing the number of shares sold to the shareholders at a prescribed value per share consisting of common stock and preferred stock so the capital stock is the equity portion of the balance sheet it consists of both the common stock and preferred stock common stock these are the shares where the shareholders have got the voting rights but the preferred stock or the preference shares are those shares where preference is given to them as far as dividend payment is concerned and as far as the uh, distribution of assets of the company is concerned at the time of winding off preference will be given to the preferred preference shareholders so two types of stocks are there common stocks and preferred stock next is capital surplus found in the equity portion of the balance sheet accounting for the amount of shareholders paid that is greater or lesser than the capital stock amount so the stock will be having a nominal value stock will be having a nominal value say 100 rupees is the nominal value if the shares are sold at the premium that is a higher value in such a case the amount which is collected this is called the capital surplus found in the equity portion of the balance sheet accounting for the amount shareholders paid that is greater than the capital stock any amount greater than the capital stock is called the capital surplus so here what happens 
suppose the value of the stock is 100 rupees and this stock or share is sold at a premium in such a case the amount collected above the par value of the shares that is called the capital surplus Okay, the next class is on Wednesday. Yes, correct. So, with that, we are coming to a conclusion of today's session, but please don't go away. Please give your feedback. Thank you.